Israeli TV has reported on an, an Israeli occupation force document that was circulated um, throughout the, uh, Israel's military intelligence apparatus on September 19th, 2023, titled Detailed End-to-End -End Raid Training, which described Al-Aqsa flood in very extensive detail, down to the number of hostages uh, Hamas was planning to capture and how Hamas planned to handle them. This is a, j just under a month before the attack. Yeah. So I think you could play some of the clips if you... Uh, d the clip or you want me to go to the YouTube video? Um, no, I mean, just, just play, the, play, play the... Play the... Okay. Yeah. But it's so... Well, Almost nine months to the return in October, while the IDF still Almost nine months to the return in October, while the IDF still hasn't published the investigations of the default, we are tonight revealing the intelligence document of 800-2 that was distributed only two weeks before that Sabbath, and gave the Southern Command an accurate picture of the raid plan on the OTEF, including the exact number of abductees that was rehearsed in advance by the terrorists. All the details about what the Gaza Congress knew, here is the disclosure of our reporter Suleiman Masveda. When talking about the intelligence failure on the 7th of October, it seems that everything has already been said. And yet tonight we reveal a chilling document with its level of accuracy, which describes how much the IDF and the intelligence system knew about Hamas's plan to encroach on the territory of the state of Israel and carry out the atrocities. The document that came to us was compiled in the Gaza committee and was given the title Detailed End-to-End -End Raid Training. It was distributed on September 19, 2023, less than three weeks before the Hamas plan went into effect. The person who wrote it reveals in great detail a series of instructions from the elite unit of Hamas, the Nakfa, to attack military outposts, kibbutzim. So, as you guys can see, uh, Israel, this is an AI dub of yeah. Israeli media reports. Um, and it goes on like that. I, um, uh, if you, yeah. So if you move ahead. down to his next tweet as well, another thing that, that, um, 12, Boltzmann Bouti, uh, who was re recently reinstated on Twitter after being banned not long after I was in, in February, um, he's dug up this Haaretz article, which notes that there is a, the, the IOF has a, um, devil's advocate intelligence unit, which is tasked with challenging, um, prevailing opinions in the military apparatus and they they presented their thesis that Hamas was likely to launch a major attack um, like right around the time this Israeli this 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 document was being circulated so this is just the latest in a, in a kind of pretty much relentless stream since October 7th yeah it, it, which is it's as good as self-admitted that the Israelis knew that this was coming um, I suggested this at the time um, and people were very unhappy about it, and I had lots of, you know, comrades say that I was like diminishing um, uh, Hamas' success and suggesting that they couldn't have, that have done it. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that it was like insulting to suggest that they couldn't have done it if Israel didn't let them. Actually, like, it, it, it is. Um, I mean, it's just the fact is, it's just a simple fact based on the based on uh, Gaza being heavily surveilled to an extent which is like surpasses pretty much any other area in the world um that th they that there the chances of of israeli intelligence not knowing this was coming was effectively zero and um, so um i do feel somewhat vindicated on this but it's like a lot of people have attributed the success of hamas's attack which i might add that they themselves were like surprised by how little resistance and how far they got into Israel. Mm -hmm. And that like, once their plan was effectively complete, they were like, well, what do we do? Sure. Like, like, like I mean, what do we do now? Yeah. Um, and so like, it, the, people have suggested that this is the result of like, Israeli complacency and hubris and the, the IOF and Mossad actually being a bit useless. Um, that is perfectly compatible with this being allowed to happen. Right. Because they didn't expect the scale of the it. scale of yeah it. The, uh, and yes like how um how how successfully that they would um that that, that, that they would penetrate um israel so um yeah but and uh, this was something that, that I, I i pointed out at the time and i think it bears repeating um the the, the um they hamas made a promotional video in advance 
I, of, is this the YouTube link? Uh, no, it's the it's my tweet that like um, it, it, the, the, uh, there's also the Business Insider article like Hamas built a mock Israeli town in Gaza and practices attack in plain sight. Like they 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 made promotional videos of exactly what they were going to do. Yeah. Um, the idea that this wasn't noticed, <laughs> like when they were using like. It, it, like what they were like you know, like flying into this mock-up town on gliders just as they did on october 7th and shooting uh and it's just like i mean the the the, the, the i mean was was the iof like truly that asleep at the wheel yeah um i think the answer it's hard was. to believe i mean all of the surveillance startups like good portion of them come from israel they have probably yeah. the highest per capita spending on this kind of stuff yeah um state-of-the-art surveillance systems yeah. i mean really like yeah and i think that it's like but it, there's another aspect to this as well which i think is like is far more i mean this is another point to make is that israel has a like in the, i have been involved in palestine solidarity activism for like for almost 20 years now yeah um are uh, the amount of times that they have done stuff like this to justify a brutal crackdown is like it's like countless sure it's like the basis of like operation cast lead in 2014 where they just like leveled got like like gaza <laughs> horrific was they they deliberately did this to, they, they deliberately started provoking hamas in order to sabotage peace talks yeah and then when Hamas un unleashed a, a, a flurry of quote-unquote rockets, which are not rockets in the um, conventional sense of the term, sure. but just like projectiles that like, aren't really aimed at anything, yeah. um, th th they said, well, this is justification for us torpedoing the peace talks and carpet bombing Gaza. Right. Like, that was the basis of it. Yeah. And it's like, got to bear in mind that like Israel assisted Azerbaijan um to, uh in committing like a total ethnic cleansing of Artsakh, which is um uh, azerbaijan has has had now had very sadly um a armenian uh ethnic cleansing. A, a, a enclave within oh, yeah. it's called okay. Artsakh, yeah. and they it, it, the, it the entire population was removed yeah by uh, having been subject to an absolutely brutal um blockade which prevented like basic supplies getting through and um and with the threat that they would be like annihilated through military force if they didn't leave yeah um condemnation from western rights groups naught condemnation yeah. from western politicians naught um so in yeah, that who, context who is there trying to mediate russia yes yeah and it's just like in that context like he uh, netanyahu who well, yeah, was facing major domestic political problems and the threat of prosecution for like high crimes and misdemeanors in office um would have every reason to see that as an effective green light to do the same in gaza uh, so, I mean, I think this is, this is something that's even more, but like, what's even more sinister, I think, um, is if you go to the academic paper, this is something that I reported on. It's been rather, it got kind of memory hold almost immediately, even though it did get some mainstream coverage, yeah. which is, this is academic study shows that it, that was carried out by people who, as far as I can tell, are not tinfoil hatted conspiracy theorists. Um, the, it was these two U.S. academics who, who analyzed stock market activity before October seventh and found that there was a huge spike in in what's known as short selling of Israeli companies, both in Israel itself and also um, within the U.S. Now, shorting is quite a rare practice, and it's something it, 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 it compared to traditional trading. And um, many investment advisors actively warn against doing it because you, effectively you are betting that particular stocks yeah. are going to perform badly. Yeah. Um, it is usually knowing this is like usually dependent on some degree of insider trading sure. or like it, you knowing things that you shouldn't yeah um or shouldn't be in a position through you know open source uh research right. to know and like effectively it, it, your losses can massively exceed your initial investment because you need to to keep pumping money to support your negative position right and that's what the film the big short is all about is that like they, they spent ages waiting for the for the housing market to crash and then it did yeah um but the um 
but anyway, the point is, is is that um, the if you go to the academic paper, and I think it's like it's yeah. page thirteen. And I have oh page. <coughs> uh, got, I'm gonna open up the actual document. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go to like page thirteen, it has this is like the the, the graph on the next page is even more damning. But it's like it's, it's not. It's just not opening. I got the abstract up, but oh, uh, give it a minute. That's all right. But yeah, so it's like the, 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 I, I recommend like going. I need an account. What? Just tell me I need an account. <laughs> so, um, um, you can just it, it, you say it says you can just like view it. Well, I can download it without registration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Download the paper and then uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so in effect, like I, I, I recommend that everyone like read this because it, it's, it's very comprehensive. Like it, it has lots of very like striking graphs, which we. Uh, might be able to view. Yeah, it's coming uh, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you go to page 13 first, and it's like, this is a um, graphic showing um, the shorting of Israeli um, uh, stocks. On October 6th. Fr from September 1st yeah. to October 6th. Now, look at that graph. <laughs> Does that not look very, very, very suspicious to you? Um, if, you the, if you go down to the next page, the, there is a, 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 a the, the, there is a similar kind of you see you see the spike now um, maybe just maybe this could be a coincidence except the, a the, the paper also finds that there were similar patterns of short selling in April 2023 right when Hamas was planning to execute a similar attack but called it off at the last minute mm. now the paper authors of course, suggests that this was Hamas trying to profiteer off their own attack. Um, I don't think that that's true. Does Hamas um, own significant, significant portions of Israeli stocks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't... Because I, don't I think that it's, it's, it, what's really interesting as well is that this paper touches on something which has been completely forgotten, but it's like one of... It was what one of the key indicators of foreknowledge of 9-11, yeah. which is that, in effect, before... 9-11, um, th there was a huge uptick in short selling of the stock of, of stocks that were directly impacted, right. like the security firms operating in the in the in the, in the twin towers, like um, airline the airlines that mm -hmm. like the the the, uh, the the hijackers flew on. Um, that it, it, it that like this was, and then but then it was also like on I think it was on September 10th the purchase of Raytheon shares, this is like this major weapons manufacturer, mm -hmm. they soared sixfold. Mm -hmm. And then a week later, their value had almost doubled. Right. Um, so uh, yeah, like this was, it, this is rather forgotten, but like this was officially investigated in like multiple countries. And they, uh, it, th there have been numerous academic investigations which conclude that this is like incontrovertible proof that there was foreknowledge of 9-11, which people sort of profiteer from. Um, it's, it, there. those investigations kind of like, went cold yeah. after like initial kind of public statements by European finance ministers and, and government officials that, yeah, like we've identified suspicious short selling before 9-11. We're going to um, find out who did it and why. Yeah. And then immediately it just kind of evaporated. And, and there is a, a, a quite clear um, uh, explanation um, for this, uh, which is contained in um, the, uh, the web archive link. Um, well, really quickly, I just I, yeah, I would sorry. just add that uh, you know the the mainstream media mm. is picking up on the Saudi involvement in nine eleven. Yes, as we speak. Yes, this comes days after Saudi Arabia, you know, ditched the petrodollar. So, go figure. Yeah. You know, the U.S. Um, is suddenly very concerned about human rights abuses in, yeah, in right, uh, Saudi right. Arabia. Like, it's taken them a while to realize, you know, what with all like the public beheadings and stuff. But it's sure. like now, you know, it's like unambiguous. Well, open stuff. source technology wasn't there yet. So yeah, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Well, they didn't. Account. Yeah, they didn't have bank account on hand. Um, but it's like, yeah. So if you if you load up this PDF document, yeah. this is like an FBI. Um, it, it's the records of an FBI investigation into one of the people who profited from um, short selling of. Uh, so, for instance, um, like th this is this the, 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 this was the. Um, 
uh, the, the, one of the suspicious trades that was specifically looked at by the FBI was the purchase of 56,000 shares of Stratasec between September 6th and September 10th. This is a company that provided security systems to airports, including New York City's Dulles Airport, where you know, one of the hijacked SDC. planes departed. Um, uh, you know, uh, and uh, it, 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 yeah. Anyway, its share price almost doubled following the attacks. Um, the trades were traced back to Wirt D. Walker III, a relative of the Bush family and business partner of Marvin Bush, then President George W. Bush's brother. According to the declassified file, the FBI never bothered to interview him about the trades, um, as their background investigation revealed that Wirt D. Walker had no ties to terrorism. Mm. Well, of course, like, you know, like he's not working for Al Qaeda. So, you know, right. like, I'm sure that these, 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 <laughs> this investment was made in totally good faith. Uh, but, but, but it's, yeah, that I think that it is quite, it is very, very, very clear that a lot of people knew that this was coming. And now, if we, I think as well that one of the, because, because of the international backlash against Israel for what it's doing, this has been rather lost. But one thing Israel has tried to do, and also the Israeli lobby in the US has tried to do, is elevate the date 10 7 to 9 11 in mm -hmm. the Western public consciousness. They failed miserably, of yeah. course. Hey, everyone. Um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarch. Thank you.